Quick, I'm pleased to be joined by my longtime friend, former Nashville banner reporter, former co-owner of the Nashville scene, entrepreneur, and now CEO of the Power Pole, Bruce Doby. Always good to see you, pal. Great to see you, Bob. The mayor's race, this has been a unique race, in my opinion. Huge field. Never seen a field this big. And really an impressive field. A, a lot of diversity, a lot of different backgrounds, elected officials, business people, uh, different cultures, different ethnicities. Uh, from the start, an impressive field. Obviously, it's going to winnow down as we get closer and closer to the election, but, but Nashville should be proud and going to be served well by whoever wins this race. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's, you know, we've got 12 candidates um, and all of them brought something unique and different to the table. Um, you know, you take a, a Jim Gingrich, COO of Alliance Bernstein, yeah. and yet he drops out of the race. <laughs> I mean, you know, he was a, he was a great candidate. And Freddie O'Connell, you know, councilman and Alice Rowley, I mean, she's worked on a lot of Republican political causes. So they, they were across the map, and it was a very impressive Are you group. surprised that, other than Gingrich, who just dropped out, they all held in there. We're going into the election, and they're all still in the race. And all of them have a reason to want to yeah. stay in the race. I mean, the undecided level is just so huge right now that... We're at least 25%, yeah, something? Yeah, 25%, approximately. Maybe more, maybe less. So from the very beginning, this race has had an era of, era, an era of volatility to it, and I think it still does. The race to me is interesting in that usually there's an issue that's going to define the race. There's been no issue for this race. There are important issues out there, mass transit, crime, guns, education, health care, all that stuff. But nothing has become the touchstone issue for this race. Does that surprise you, Eddie? I'm going to like, I think the Titans investment and the Titans package was probably, if you're going to say there was one issue in the race. The I stadium to, deal. But the stadium deal. And... I think the guy who was the front runner in, the, in this race, Freddie O'Connell, made that his touchstone That's a good point. Yep. And you look at his TV spots, and he says that I'm not for out-of-state billionaires. I was opposed to this Titans deal. I'm the only public official who voted against it, and you need to be for me. And so, you know, I, I probably I may beg to differ a little no, bit. No, I, 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 I agree with you on that. Yeah. I, I, it hasn't been talked about much, but, uh, but, uh, but of the issues that are out there, that is the one that's been talked about, and he that is the difference that he has shown. And it's also resulted in a lot of pushback from the people who favor this deal, from downtown business owners and the like. So he's, he's being criticized for it. There, there's the pro and the con side of that issue. Yeah, and yet there was polling done in this community that showed a majority of likely voters opposed to the Titans deal. I mean, it was not overwhelming. It was like, you know, 55, 45. But still, I think Freddie aligned himself on the right side of this issue. There's a there's a trend. Uh, there's there's a majority now op opposing the, the racetrack deal. There's a there's also we did some polling, a little loose polling. If there's a baseball stadium, a major league baseball team comes, they don't want public money into that. So so they, they, they've seen this a couple of times now with the Titans and they don't like it. Yeah, and the, the opposition on both those deals, if you look at that poll that you're, that you're discussing, it was, it's huge. It's like opposition to Major League Baseball is like 80-20. And, uh, you know, so, so these numbers are, I think people are suffering a little bit from Titans fatigue yeah. on this stadium deal. And, uh, and these, these other things are going nowhere. Quickly, does that get people to the polls? Are you surprised at the low voter turnout for early voting so far? It's not been very strong at all. It's so low. And, you know, it's typically low in a mayor's race, and it skyrockets when you've got a U.S. Senate race or a governor's race sure. or, or presidential. But it's, it's going to be in the neighborhood of 100,000 voters. If that. Yeah, and we're a community of, you know, a million folks. And it's, it's, just, it's it, just so sad. It surprises me in that it's an open seat. There's no uh, 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 incumbent running. Mayor Cooper decided not to run. So it's, it's, it's basically here you get to choose who you want and there still hasn't been a lot of discussion a lot of interest so maybe election day maybe people are still making up their minds i think they still are and that's what makes this race so curious here you have 12 candidates we're going to have total vote in the neighborhood of 100,000 votes mm -hmm. you could win this race or be in the top 2 with 15,000 yeah. votes i can put 15,000 names in a three ring binder and just hope that I get those people to, you know, and that's what's going on now. This is a phone call, get out the vote race. You've got your 15,000 names. Every day you've got your interns and they're making phone calls to these people. You need a ride to the polls? Have you voted? Can we help you get there? We want to make sure you're still voting for Freddie or Matt or Jim or Sharon. And so that, that's the game. It's like a big student council race, <laughs> you know? Our conversation with Bruce Doby continues in a moment as this week continues. We'll be right back. And welcome back to this week in my conversation with PowerPole CEO Bruce Doble. We were talking about this at the end of the break. This has turned into not an issue race. This has turned into 
gets your people to the poll race. It's a get out the vote race. And whoever does that, of about five or six candidates, those are the best people chances to get into this runoff. Oh, they absolutely are. So, you know, while everybody's focused on who's making the big TV buy and who's making the big radio buy and, the, and you know, the mass market sort of stuff. And look, you look how far that got Gingrich. Gingrich spent over $2 million and was just left with an expensive scrapbook. I mean, he never got above 4 or 5% of the polls. Because everyone stayed in, because of the size of this field, 15%, maybe a little more, you're going to get in the runoff with that. You may. You know, everybody's kind of like saying 20 it's with probably 12 it's, candidates. It's, if you get 15, 17, no, it's 15 to 20. You're exactly <laughs> right. And that could get you in a runoff. What does that do for the general election? Does it, does it, is, it a whole, is it a whole reset? Does, does interest change when there's down to two candidates? Uh, do issues become more important? Do you think it's a different race that in that six weeks after this election into the, into the runoff election? <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are doing that calculus. And I think that there are, it all depends on who the candidates are in that runoff. If you get, so the extremes right now are Freddie O'Connell on the left side of the pack. People are thinking he's going to place first. Yep. And you think you've got Alice Rowley on the far right-hand side of the pack. She may be placing second. Who knows? She's definitely coming up. And that would be a re reprise of the 2015 election. Now, Freddie would have to be heavily favored over the Republican right. in that race. Now, if it's two Democrats running it against each other, if it's Freddie versus Yarborough or Freddie versus Wilcher, that's going to be a bigger turnout. Election. When you look at the possibility of Alice Rowley, and I think she's going to be the surprise of this of this election if she comes in second, and she's polling right there. I mean, she's she's right there. Uh, what does that say about the demographics of Nashville? What does that say about the changing politics of Nashville? Uh, what the General Assembly wants to do in regards to Nashville? Or does it end up being exactly what we saw with David Fox? He somehow got into the runoff but got killed in the general election. It still is a Democratic city. It's still a Democratic city. And I think it's more of a reprise of 2015. And I don't think Republicans have made headway here since 2015 or in recent years. In fact, the data would show the opposite, that the younger voters who are moving into this community, the younger people who are moving into this community are by and large of a Democratic hue. So she, she's really going to have her work cut out from it. Now, the legislature is going to be really trying to help Alice oh. Rowley. And Republicans across the state are going to be, and you look at her contributor list, I mean, it's a lot of Republicans from outside of Davidson County. Whoever wins this race, they got their hands full. There's a lot of great things going on in Nashville. There's also a lot of problems. What's the first thing whoever the new mayor is has to address? Is it mass transit? Is it gun violence? What do they have to get their kind of hands dirty on quickly? It's really a host of things. You know, I think one of the issues that has resonated in this campaign is affordable housing. I mean, that's what risen to the fore. I think transit is, is a big one. And I think that those issues all operate under the rubric of making Nashville work. Right. You had the sense over the last four years that things had kind of spiraled out of control. Too much congestion, maybe a little more crime, maybe a little less likelihood of being able to get your trash picked up. So I think that the voters are yearning for a candidate who can make Nashville work. We'll find out next week as voters go to the polls next uh, August the 3rd, next Thursday. Thank you, Bruce Toby. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Gold is up this week. You stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, thank you for spending part of your weekend with us. That will do it for another edition of This Week. I want to thank my guest, PowerPole CEO, Bruce Doby. We hope to see you back here next weekend for another edition of This Week. Have a great week and be sure to vote next week. We'll see you next weekend.